Problem 117 says, if n is positive, which of the following is equal to 1 over uh, square root of n plus 1 minus the square root of n? So 1 over the square root of n plus 1 minus the square root of n. They say if n is positive, which of the following is equal to this? And they have five answer choices. And they are... A is just 1, B is the square root of 2n plus 1, C is square root of n plus 1 over square root of n, D is the square root of n plus 1 minus the square root of n, and finally E is the square root of n plus 1 plus the square root of n. And when we take a look at this equation, the first thing you want to do is, uh, is think back to uh, FOIL and the fact that x squared minus y squared is the same as x plus y times x minus y. When you understand that principle and you look at the square roots and the fact that this is a negative, you know that you have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of n plus 1 plus the square root of n. So um, let's do that. Let me write it here so that we have more room and I can better explain what's going on. Basically, you can multiply it by 1 over 1, right? Because that's going to equal 1, and it's not going to change the equation. By that similar logic, we can, uh, we can actually multiply the numerator by the square root of n plus 1 plus the square root of n over the square root of n plus 1 plus the square root of n. It's the same as multiplying this entire thing by 1. But what ends up happening when you do this is it turns the equation into this. The square root of n plus 1 plus n at the top, and at the bottom we get n plus 1 because when you multiply two of the same uh, numbers that are square rooted, uh, it just becomes that number. And uh, over here you get minus n. The two n's cancel out, and you're left with just n plus 1, uh, the square root of n plus 1, plus the square root of n. And uh, that is uh, going to be answer choice E. Great. Number 118. That says, the ratio of the length of the width, no, the ratio of, a, of the length to the width of a rectangular advertising display is approximately 3.3 to 2. So you have a rectangular display here, and they say that the ratio between the length and the width is 2x and 3.3x. We put the x here as a multiplier so that we know that the length isn't just 3.3. It's 3.3 times something. If the width of the display is 8 meters, what is the length? Oh, okay, so they're saying that this equals 8. So 2x equals 8. Well, then x equals 4. And they're asking us, what is the actual length here? Well, if uh, what they're really asking then is, what's 3.3 times 4? You get 13.2. And they're saying, what's the approximate length? That means the answer choice isn't going to actually say 13.2, but it's going to have a number very close to it. And that's going to be answer choice C, because C is 13. On to 119, and uh, number 119 says, which of the following is equivalent to the pair of inequalities x plus 6 is greater than 10 and x minus 3 is less than or equal to 5? So what is equal uh, to, to th this pair? Well, first thing we want to do is, is get x on its own side. So subtract 6 from both sides and you get x is greater than 4. Now on this side, let's uh, add a 3 on both sides. We get x is less than or equal to 8. Then let's combine these two equations to get x is larger than 4 and smaller than, or, or less than or equal to 8. Is that one of the answer choices, 119? Uh, yes, it looks like that is answer choice D. Number 120, 
David has D books, which is three times as many as Jeff and a ha half as many as Paula. Okay, so David has D books. That is equal to three times Jeff's number of books and half as many as Paula. So half P. How many books do the three of them have together in terms of D? So they're asking, what's D plus J plus P in terms of, of uh, D? And uh, of course, when they say in terms of something, what they mean is, uh, is that the answer choice is going to have D in it. So we don't have to actually solve for what D is. Let me write this. I had a little typo there earlier. Uh, in terms of D. Okay. So how do we get started with this question? Well, let's uh, figure out the relationship between these and turn this equation into all these. So D equals 3J, J must equal D over 3. So D plus D over 3 plus, if D equals half P, then P must equal 2D. 2D equals what? Let's uh, multiply this by 3 over 3 and this by 3 over 3 get 60, and add them together. 10D over 3, and that is answer choice C. Number 121 says there are eight teams in a certain league, and each team plays each other's teams exactly once. If each game is played by two teams, what is the total number of games played? Hmm, let's... List out the teams. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And uh, use a slightly different color. It's green. Okay, so what we're going to do is we need to figure out how many different combinations are possible with eight teams. Well, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, right? Two and three are together, so that's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Three and four. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. And 28 is going to be your answer, and that is C. Now you might be wondering, well, if I don't want to draw this out and, and, and make this huge, ridiculous-looking web, is there an algebraic way to solve it? Like, you know, what if they didn't give us eight numbers? What if they gave us 80 numbers? Is there some way that we can just do some multiplication and figure out the answer? Uh, yeah, there is uh, actually a way to do it. Now, the way to figure this out is that you know, no team is going to play itself, right? So one is not going to play against itself. So each game also only needs to be counted once, and there are eight teams here, seven teams, etc., etc., etc. So what is really going to what, what we're really going to be looking for is 8 factorial uh, over, let me see, over 2 factorial. Now, th this little uh, exclamation point here doesn't mean that you shout the 8. It's not 8 over 2. You know, it, it, when you see the factorial, that's the same as saying 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3, all the way to 1. Yeah. So... The same with 2. Now you're wondering why is there 8 and why is there 2? The reason why there's 2 on the bottom is because we're looking for teams of 2. And the reason why we're, there's 8 up here is because there are 8 different possibilities. So what we do is we take, oh, actually, you know, we don't just look for 2. We're also looking for the people who aren't going to be playing. So uh, it, it's going to be 2 and then actually 6 factorial. Because we're not only looking for the number of uh, it, teams of two, but we're also, every time there's a team of two, there's also six people that are, are not playing in that team. So, uh, so what we're actually going to get is eight times seven times six times five 
times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 1 and also times 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now this cancels out this and what you're left with is x or 8 times 7 over 2 that makes 4 and you get 4 times 7 28. Um, when we get to the next combinatorics problem I'll explain in more detail why this is the case but for now um, just know that you use factorials to figure out um, different po ways of counting the number of people on teams. Okay Moving on, uh, 122. And 122 says an operation, uh, and they, they give us a symbol that looks like this. An operation uh, is defined by the equation uh, that for all numbers a and b such that a doesn't equal negative b and a doesn't equal negative c, um, and then they, they give us this. Uh, equals zero and they're asking what is C now the way to solve this is we have to figure out uh, the relationship between these right so with this symbol uh, I don't know what we're gonna call this symbol but the relationship between a and B here is that a minus B is over a plus B so the relationship between a over C has to be the same you know it, it's got to be a minus C over a plus C and they told us that that is equal to zero so let's set that equal to zero now let's solve for C by first cross multiplying. A minus C equals zero. Because zero multiplied by anything is going to be zero. Now what we do is uh, we add C to both sides. And you get A equals C. So what does C equal? C equals A. A is going to be answer choice E. Uh, 123 says the price of lunch for 15 people was two hundred and seven dollars including a fifteen percent gratuity what was the average price per person excluding the gratuity alright let's uh, let's set this up by first um, figuring out what variables to use let's use X so X is gonna be the number of uh, the amount of money they spent on the meal um, without the gratuity the gratuity is gonna be fifteen percent of the meal right so it's gonna be zero point one to five X and that whole thing is going to add up to $207. So then we add these together to get 1.15x equals 207. And we divide. And by doing that, we're going to get x equals 180. So what we've just figured out here is that they paid 180 for the meal. Then they paid gratuity to get 207. But the question, don't forget, is asking us how much did each person pay they split it evenly uh, the question said that uh, there were 15 people right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide 180 by 15 and you know that's just gonna get you 12 so each person paid $12 and $12 is answer choice B all right I think I'm out of time, but I will continue this in the next video. And in the next video, we're going to look at a problem um, where we're going to set up a matrix. I, and we have a lot of these types of problems, um, but hopefully it should uh, come pretty naturally. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.